here is what I think one of the fundamental problems with WoW is. The fundamental problem with the game is that socialization is optional. What can I say? I, I was in love with that game. I was in love with the people I played with, with those experiences of like, we worked so hard to get to that point. Blizzard has, let's be honest, Blizzard has completely dropped the ball. So I'm here to say this. Blizzard have got to stop ignoring their competition. It has been a disaster. Patch after patch, week after week, month after month. for the uh, World of Warcraft expansion <laughs> to come out. Do you guys play together? No, we play different servers. He's Horde, I'm Alliance. Oh, that's like seven bedrooms. Well, uh, <laughs> you know, wait until she levels up so I can kill her. Welcome back to X-Play. Earlier in the show, we reviewed one of the two biggest massively multiplayer online role-playing games of the year. EverQuest 2, and we gave it a very respectable four out of five. But there's another MMORPG out there that wants your money and hundreds of hours of your life. We speak, of course, of World of Warcraft, or WoW. Massively multiplayer online role-playing games have been around for years now, but it's taken this long for the genre's breakthrough hit to finally emerge. But World of Warcraft is indeed that game. This is uh, just an incredible accomplishment and an incredibly fun game above all else. Hey, let's talk about World of Warcraft's failure, and hopefully its redemption. When people talk about online gaming and how it's changed over the years and the genre and innovations that have come from the advancement of technology and ideas, MMOs have always been in this kind of strange area. You honestly have to be some kind of lunatic to even spark the idea that you want to design and publish a fully functional MMORPG. Not to mention the cost of even trying to run an MMORPG from something unknown. Many big names have come and many have failed, but one of the biggest names in the industry, whether you like them or not, is Blizzard's World of Warcraft. See, WoW hit the scene in a big way following a big company by Blizzard, but it was tapping into a market that at the time wasn't as well known or arguably as popular as it is today. And by all accounts, World of Warcraft was a casual MMORPG for the time. I think most people forget as laborious and difficult classic leveling was in terms of reaching max level, for the average player, it wasn't considered the toughest compared to some that already existed in the market. It was a new MMO landscape that was relying on their Warcraft IP to take them through. An IP that was otherwise an RTS game. That and some spin-offs like the point and click, but we don't talk about that one. It did have a huge popular fan base, however. Riding the tail end of a popular Warcraft 3 and the Blizzard name, it had the foundations for something great. All they had to do now was convince a majority of their consumer base to pay to play. The idea of having to pay a monthly fee to play a game I already paid the box price for, well, that was absolutely ridiculous. And that wasn't the common idea back then. In fact, I think most of us would give anything to go back to a time where the box price plus a monthly fee was the least of our worries in terms of gaming and premium prices. But here's the thing. At the time, it worked. Yeah, yeah. World of Warcraft, after a very shaky launch, 
was actually a huge success. The amount of attention this game was garnering. Internet personalities, memes, celebrity commercials, and even hit spots on television shows. This was it. The rise of a gaming titan. I remember it. Who doesn't when they first started their characters back in the early days? It was fresh, exciting. The art style was unique, but still very Warcraft after Warcraft 3. It gave you a chance to explore the world through the footsteps of one of your fantasy characters without the need for a dice or pen or paper. This of course was a time where exploring the world was vastly different. And it did one thing well. It put the MMORPG genre in the eyes of the common gamer. Other games existed for sure and other games still did rather well or have spawned sequels. But I would argue WoW hit it big with a more casual audience, where gaming was already slowly on the rise. It was an industry titan, and Warcraft was a household name among many people. This role-playing game out in 2004 returns to the world of Azeroth, where heroes like Leroy Jenkins do battle. And that would be the world of Warcraft. Well, okay, almost many people. Many other games tried to tap into the market. Many of these games had varying amount of success. Guild Wars 1 was awesome. I enjoyed it for what it was. It wasn't the WoW killer that people wanted it to be, but of course not. Then there was MMOs that would play on a popular IPs already established. Star Wars Galaxies, The Old Republic. It was huge until some changes caused the game to slowly die. Or even The Matrix Online. Not many people even knew there was a Matrix MMO, which by the way was actually kind of awesome from time to time. It was very rough around the edges, but, but it really threw you in the shoes of the Matrix universe. Then there were games that just tried to hit the same popularity with a different setting. City of Heroes was widely popular for its time, so much so that the revival of its private server was one of my biggest memories. Then of course, Wildstar, one of many MMOs to come around that would be labeled as the Fable WoW Killer. But of course, it barely lasted as long, even though the community loved its style and combat. Then there's the Asian market with so many MMORPGs to count, it's hard to even know which one to start. With the rise of technology and ideas, companies usually have to adapt. So how did WoW keep succeeding year after year and expansion after expansion for a time? How does a company that did so much good for the genre and was the reigning kinks suddenly fall so short on everything that used to make them great? Well, I think the simple answer is just a lack of care and concern for their fan base. They care, of course, but not as much as they care about your wallet. How can we make quests more grindy? How can we soft lock things that are clearly the main advertisement of an entire expansion behind some sort of grind wall to put more time into the game? How can we make things that are just a straight up upgrade that people want to spend money for rather than feeling a sense of accomplishment within an already existing in-game items. It's this general lack of care that made me start to hate the direction WoW was going. Remember when you would level up? You'd get the sense of wonder when you'd have to go to the trainer and select your skills. Early on, it was exciting. What sort of thing can I add to the role to your class? What sort of skill or ability can enhance the flavor of your character? It was something small that I honestly missed. The sense of weight that each level had to pick abilities that would help better than some others because for a new player, the cost was pretty effective at which ones we had to prioritize. Compare that to now, where you level up and just becomes another stat boost and skills immediately are added. Everything is almost too streamlined too quick. There's no fun in the discovery anymore. It's all just a way to quickly boost you to endgame. WoW leveling is no longer a world exploring experience as it is a way to fast track you to 60 in current content. How can I get to max level the fastest? There's no gradual difference in levels anymore. It's what the difference between level 1 and 60 is. Nothing in between. Items don't matter because it only matters in the endgame. Then all this vibrant and rich world that Blizzard painstakingly tried to create and establish in terms of lore becomes dead, almost unexplored. It makes me wonder why the world even exists the way it does in the first place, where games like Final Fantasy take you on a journey still. You still explore the world with quests that aren't just there to fill the XP bar. Every job has their own respective storylines that you play through, that you explore and learn about. As you grow every so often, you complete these job quests and learn new abilities in a solo type instance. It really gives you that sense of class identity helps you learn the function and really helps you establish that old wow feeling of excitement per level. Yes, there are fast way to levels an alternative job in Final Fantasy, but you still have to go through the content unless you buy the boosts for fuck's sake. But quests are enjoyable to their own and many people want to see the story unfold. This is I think the difference between wow now and wow previous. This is the difference between other MMOs like Final Fantasy 
and what Blizzard is shoehorning up. It's a story first in Final Fantasy, and that's what I miss the most. It's an experience first in Final Fantasy. It's not a theme park to get you to the end with a VIP fast pass. How does a company that made one of my favorite starting zones of all time, the zone that put you in the darker path in the footsteps of the original edgelords, the Death Knight, they really sold the idea of the new expansion, established the beloved character right from the beginning, before the ultimate betrayal. To this day, as much as I don't like the rest of Wrath, that starting zone is my favorite of all time. That showed some care, commitment, and if Blizzard had a bit more balls, maybe a truly evil faction. A third faction. How does a company that gave us meaningful loot every time something dropped turn into a boring grindfest of dailies, copy-pasted content with story that barely has any depth to them? It's why I titled the video the way I did. It's why, like many of us, we're moving on day to day to new and more fresh experience to companies that care about the value of their player base and the actual experience, not just their wallet. Honestly, I could go on and on about various different aspects of WoW and try to compare it to WoW of old or new MMOs that have taken a look at what WoW did well. There was a time when any new MMO that came up, the standard was, could this be the WoW killer? And at the time, I always joked and said, there's nothing that would kill WoW except WoW. Many of us thought the same thing. Blizzard may be so disconnected from their own bubble to realize it, but those days are here. Shadowlands was a chance to prove that BFA was just a setback, that you could rise from it and start with something new. Unfortunately, it turned out to be a glorified alpha test, and it's on its last legs. 9.1 just released, and as someone that plays other MMOs but still tries to enjoy WoW, hopefully their dwindling numbers and player base would be a cause for alarm. We can only hope that if they even make a 9.2 that it saves what's left of the trust players had for Blizzard. Part of me wishes that 9.2 nearly kills the subscriber numbers so much that Blizzard is forced to get their heads out of their own corporate bubble and start to think about things in a new fresh light. It's okay to compare. It's okay to look at the competition of a game and try and see what they get right and what you're struggling with. You can see companies that are setting the standard and be like old Blizzard and beat the standard or set one by yourself. Why not block the PTR so people can experience the fresh story without spoilers everywhere? It would be so amazing for your lore and world. Imagine most of your player base experiencing the Tyrande cinematic fighting Sylvanas for the first time that patch 9.1 hits. Imagine that every other cinematic that existed previous didn't have a data mine. That would be amazing. It would bring together the WoW community as a whole and we would all experience it together at once. It brings some sort of new magic to the world and makes you sort of invested to see what actually goes on in the story. I think that's where Blizzard's creative vision is sort of lacking. Instead of adapting to a more focused scenario about their players, they adapt to their wallets. And it's honestly kind of sad. Blizzard can only run on the fumes of their games for so long before it dies out. Why not just take the ideas, openly look at your competition, see what they're doing, and just adapt it to the player base that you so fondly created and developed over the years. It feels like the Blizzard we knew doesn't see the game the same way anymore. They see it only as one thing, and one thing only. The new store mount is a clue to that. More effort was put into that dumb six month sub mount than half the new damn mounts in 9.0 and 9.1. I think that says a lot about their mentality and their player base. I didn't know how to sign off this video without feeling empty and just sort of let down in a way. One game has me feeling like trying to convince myself every new X pack or every new content patch this will be the one. This will be the one that saves the game. I've tricked myself to enjoy a game and live off the nostalgia of WoW Classic. I love MMOs. I play a lot of them, including obscure ones, but as for WoW, it's becoming less and less prominent in my game library. So, yes, I'm another WoW refugee in a sea of refugees in Final Fantasy XIV. You can still play and enjoy both, but the time played in Azeroth is becoming less and less every day. In a competitive market, if the consumer is willing to switch, usually the competition of two companies, the consumer benefits. I feel like that's where Blizzard is sort of blind. Why not be that company that looks at your competition? Final Fantasy openly does it. Blizzard just feels like they're at the top of their game for no reason. Honestly, I could go on about the various different things that WoW used to do great and now they don't, or different games have taken from the greatness of WoW's back in the day and implement it into their game now but the video would be too long and I feel like I've beaten a dead horse already. Anyway, 
What do you think about the state of the game? What about any other MMOs that just had mechanics that you quite enjoyed and wish World of Warcraft at least implemented in some way? Are you still playing retail nowadays? Or are you still stuck with classic? As for me, I'm kind of playing TBC classic casually. I'm hard stuck in Final Fantasy at the moment. Me and many other WoW refugees. This has been your Kimchi Commander. Stay safe, have fun, and I'll see you next time.